Hi there, this is S.J. Owens Science, and we're continuing our discussion about what all organisms do. Remember last time that we saw that all organisms respond to their environment. They can react to their surroundings. We showed this with a simple experiment involving a rock and a pill bug. Whenever we shined a light on the rock, it did nothing because it is non-living and incapable of responding to its environment. It can't do anything if we shine a light on it. The pill bug, however, was capable of responding to its environment because it's a living thing. All living things can respond to their environment. We saw this in the pill bug whenever we shined the light on it, and it crawled away very quickly so that it could seek out darkness. Next, we'll see that all organisms grow and develop. Well, what does this mean? Can't we see an example? Yes, we can. Let's look at an example of an oak tree. The seed of an oak tree is found within an acorn. This is a very young acorn. You might not see very many like this because it hasn't yet fallen to the ground. It's very green and young. It has not yet fallen off of its parent tree. Whenever it does fall to the ground, it'll become very dry and ripe, and it'll be ready to grow. This is called germination at the seed level, but throughout this entire sequence of events, the oak tree, or at this stage, it's just an acorn, is growing. It'll become a little bit larger whenever it grows. It'll gain more parts that it didn't have before. In this picture, we can see that the oak tree now has leafy green parts. It has a long shoot, making it taller, and it has an extensive root system. It has many more parts that it didn't have whenever it was just an acorn. It'll become slightly larger, gaining more and more leafy green matter, so that it can do more things that it couldn't do before, such as the fact that now it can do more photosynthesis because it has more green stuff. All the photosynthesis happens in the green parts of the plant. As it becomes even older, it'll become woodier. Its shoot will become sturdier. It'll start to form a trunk. It'll be able to withstand uh, more extreme weather than it could before. As it is growing and developing, the oak tree is gaining features and abilities that it didn't have whenever it was younger. Eventually, it'll become an adult very large oak tree. They're pretty majestic whenever they're fully grown. At this stage, the adult oak tree is capable of making acorns. Now wait a minute! That was how this oak tree started out. Are you telling me that the oak tree can make things that it was once at one time? That's true, and that brings us to our next point. That all organisms reproduce and have offspring. Well, what does reproduce mean exactly? Let's add a term to our list of terms that we need whenever we're talking about living things. To reproduce means to produce a copy. We might have heard of the word copy whenever we talk about a copy machine. A copy machine is capable of taking an original document, or an original piece of paper, it might have a picture or writing on it or whatever, and then making more of it. It can make as many as you want, really. This is pretty much what living things do. They do it in a little bit of a different way, but a living thing is capable of making more of itself. The parent is capable of making offspring. Offspring being the copies of the parent. Can we tie this into the example of the oak tree that we saw earlier? Yes, we can. An adult oak tree makes many, many acorns. Each one of those acorns is capable of making another oak tree, if the conditions are right. If one of those acorns grows into a fully adult oak tree, then it will make more acorns. And each one of those acorns can then make another oak tree. You can see that this is a kind of circle doesn't end. There's no front or back or top or bottom. There is no beginning or end. This is called a reproductive cycle. Parent makes offspring. Offspring becomes parent, which then makes more offspring, and it goes on and on forever. Some people rephrase this whenever they ask the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I'll tell you that the answer to that question is neither. Neither really came first. They both kind of are happening at the same time. There is no beginning or end to the chicken life cycle. It's just a kind of a circle. It doesn't have a beginning or end. So that about wraps up what we'll talk about for growth and development, 
and reproduction and offspring. Join us next time whenever we talk about how all organisms have a complex chemistry and maintain homeostasis. This is SJO in Science, and I hope that you take the time to check out some of the other videos. Thanks for watching.